Solana, does it make sense to buy when others are fearful? That's the big question, right? Because currently the SOL token is at $18 and it used to be at more than $250 not so long ago, right? So this was in November of last year. So should we buy now? The big, big question is always, what's the long-term outlook for SOL? Are there still developers on the chain? Is there still total value locked there? So is there money locked in different applications? That's a big question. And then what we also want to look at is the mass psychology, right? Where is currently everything headed? Now, I did a video on the mass psychology slash the technical analysis of Solana roughly six months ago. And I still have all of those lines of those charts. Okay, so that's a nice thing about trading view you can save what you have done in the past and you can look at all of those charts again and we are going to revisit those, those charts now we are not just looking at the us dollar chart we're actually going to look at relative valuation charts because i think those are actually more useful than just the us dollar chart and the reason for that is the us dollar chart is normally very much influenced by the general macro so nowadays you've got a lot of correlation across crypto assets, of course, but also across crypto to traditional finance. So let's say the Fed is not increasing their interest rates as much as anticipated, right? There's a positive surprise. Tech stocks are rallying. As an extension of tech stocks rallying, Bitcoin and Ethereum is rallying as well. And as an extension of that, Solana is likely going to rally as well. So you get price appreciations of SOL that are completely independent of the project's development, right? Or that are completely independent of what developers or users, et cetera, are doing. It's simply just macroeconomic impact. So what I like to do is I like to look at relative valuations. I like to look at Solana, for example, relative to ETH, relative to Bitcoin, relative to other layer one competitors, smart contract platforms, right? For example, BNB or AVEX. And so with that relative valuation, we can then more or less distill what's actually happening for Solana directly. So let's jump into this. This is the direct Solana chart. Okay, and before we look at the total value locks, let's look at the TA. This is the US dollar chart. And we do see from those prior lines that the bearish momentum continued, but we also see that there was some kind of a fake out. And this was because the general crypto market stabilized somewhat, right? Bitcoin was holding up relatively well, at least versus the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ really crashed. Bitcoin was able to somewhat hold steady. And so Solana was also able to somewhat hold steady. Then with the FTX collapse, uh, Solana also went down quite a bit because Solana was obviously very much supported by FTX, right? Sam Bankman-Fried was a strong supporter. You even had direct integrations of so-called decentralized exchanges with FTX. So when you were trading on Radium, for example, you had the order book of FTX also being directly implemented in Radium. That order book is now obviously gone and the integration isn't that useful anymore, but that's the kind of degree of how much Solana is dependent on FTX and SPF. All right, so we had this big, big crash. This is now what we are seeing. Now let's look at the relative valuations as we have said before. This is Solana relative to Bitcoin and it tends to trade in the sideways trading range. Now we are below what used to be a floor in June of 2022, right? These are all old charts and we are not really losing that much relative to Bitcoin. But once we look actually at the other layer one competitors, this picture changes. And the reason why I want to look at other smart contract platforms in comparison is because the risk might also be comparable, right? Bitcoin is less risky, it's less volatile. And so you might actually want to outperform with something more risky, right? When you've got Solana, obviously that's more risky, especially in the current state. So this is Solana relative to ETH. And Solana was already for a long time since September of 2021, underperforming ethereum and this underperformance these charts they are not small right this is not like small movements this is an underperformance here of 74 percent in other words if you held eve instead of solana you would have now pretty much four times the money so this is why i find this interesting these charts are not these lines are not drawn just yesterday right it's six months back and still we see this kind of trend just continues and even within the range somewhat. 
when we look at Solana relative to Cardano, Cardano also didn't do too well, right? We also see somewhat of a long-term underperformance. But interestingly enough, right, even though uh, FTX collapsed, uh, ADA is also doing pretty poorly recently, mainly because of technical developments, right? Solana isn't, uh, uh, ADA isn't doing too great here. The Solana relative to Phantom, Phantom collapsed, a lot of the DeFi projects collapsed. That's a whole nother story for another video or simply feel free to check out the channel for Phantom. Now here comes the things that are really, really interesting. This is Solana relative to BNB. And BNB is pretty much now the king, in my opinion, across the different DeFi platforms, across the different DeFi chains. Now, if Binance really was to go under, because we now see all of these withdrawals happening from centralized exchanges, right? If Binance was to go under, of course, the Binance margin would also collapse. This would be really a major, major blow because then pretty much all of DeFi is completely decimated. And we can see this when we do some comparisons. So let's look, for example, at Avalanche. Okay, so Avalanche was one of the major DeFi platforms in the DeFi summer. And we had our total value locked, according to DeFi Llama, at around 12 billion. This went down now to less than 1 billion, 766 million, relatively constantly. So quite a lot of a collapse as well. Now, when we look at Solana, we have a similar peak. So here we are looking at a peak of 10 billion, but here we didn't just go down to 766 million in Solana. The total value locked in the entire ecosystem is down to 200 million. Okay, so look at this, 10 billion to 200 million. So even you know, another 70% down from what we have already collapsed in an avalanche. Now, can this turn around? It's gonna be a big, big challenge, right? Because 200 million, this is pretty much the the size at um, that we were in like April of 2021, close to the launch. So basically all of the growth is gone now. The momentum is really, really against Solana right now. And when we now compare this, to the one chain that held up relatively well, you will see the difference, right? Here we are just like pretty much at the horizontal axis again. Here, look at the Binance Smart Chain, right? Here we started also in the 200 million range. We then went up to 20 billion, not just 10, but now we are still at 4 billion. Okay, so it's not a pretty chart either, but in relative terms, right? If you are left with 200 million, or if you're left with 4,000 million, right, or 4 billion, that's a big, big difference. So BNB was able to hold up comparatively well. And this is what we see here in this relative valuation chart. And this is not something that just happened recently. This relative underperformance of Solana already uh, happened way, way back. So do I think it makes sense to buy Solana now at these depressed prices. I am somewhat skeptical, but obviously everybody um, has different ideas about this. And most of the time when assets collapse, most people say it's over and you shouldn't buy. Right? A lot of people say this now about Bitcoin as well. Crypto is over. Uh, just stupid people would still buy Bitcoin at this point. For Solana, I'd pretty much go with the crowd. So. Most people say Solana is that, and I tend to agree. Uh, the reason being the, the biggest backer is gone, right? So FTX doesn't do anything. We don't see a lot of new developments happening and simply just the degree of the collapse from 10 billion to 200 million is so massive that there's really just like the last little pieces that haven't yet been withdrawn still in the ecosystem. So my personal opinion around these kind of situations is you want to make a contrarian bet only then when you believe in the asset over the long term. So if you think that the market is currently mispricing something and they're very depressed about something, which can happen all the time, right? Tech stocks, solid tech stocks can collapse 70, 80% and they are on a discount and it makes sense to buy them. But you can only do this when you've got the conviction 
that five years from now things will turn around and you need to have a strong opinion or a strong reason for that turnaround, right? So let's say the Google stock is now going down 50%, 60%, 70%. You'd have a strong reason to still buy Google at these low prices. And that strong reason could be, for example, that uh, the search engine isn't going anywhere, Android isn't going anywhere. There are some really strong monopolies that are hard to overthrow. So if you buy a monopoly on the cheap, that's obviously a good thing. So this, this is the kind of arguments you have to do. And when you buy Bitcoin, you could potentially make a similar argument, right? It's the leading cryptocurrency. It's very likely not to get outlawed because it already has the stamp of approval from the US government, not necessarily for other crypto projects where they are more centralized. So that's also some kind of a mode that, that Bitcoin has. Now for Solana, it's hard, right? You've got the regulatory uncertainty. You've got the momentum going strongly against this. You also have all the competition. So there's not just one layer, one smart contract platform. There's obviously Ethereum, which is the leading one. There's the Binance Smart Chain, which does have the centralized risk. But there's tons of others, also upcoming layer one competitors, such as the Near Protocol. When Solana was still a big thing, it also still had outages. It always had the reputational issue with a lot of VC backing in the early days where then the early insiders sold into a rising market, potentially depressing the price, causing some of that underperformance. So that's all the problems with Solana. And I'm not sure if the risk to reward is really justifying getting in. I personally like to bet on something that's somewhat stable where I can somewhat certainly uh, say that it's still going to be around three, four, five years from now. And with Solana, it's a pretty tough bet, right? There's nothing that would prevent Solana from dropping another 50% from here, simply because there is no real floor. There is nobody that's really supporting it and there's nobody on the horizon that could support it. So I don't really see a scenario that I could play out in theory, even give it as some kind of probability. I don't really see a positive bull scenario where suddenly Solana becomes the big next thing again. And that's the reason why I personally, I stay away. Not financial advice, right? Do whatever you want to do. And if you've got some play money going around, right? Just throw some at it and hope that it 10Xs. It's possible, right? Uh, nobody can see the future. And if all of crypto is going up, obviously something that's more risky, such as Solana, might go up even more. But if you re disregard all of this and you simply just see your capital as fresh capital that you appreciate a lot, then simply try to find the best risk versus reward bet. And I'm not sure if Solana is really the best risk versus reward at this point in time. So I personally stay away. If you found this useful, feel free to give this a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you haven't yet. There's also links to the Telegram group. Feel free to check those out as well. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.